Hey friends, how's everyone doing today? Hope you're all having an amazing day so far. Tammy M coming to you from TammyMCoaching.com. And what I wanna to talk to you about today is the difference between safe and unsafe people. The difference between safe and unsafe people. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, but in case we haven't met before, I'll take a quick moment to properly introduce myself. Once again, my name is Tammy M. I am an empowerment coach for women. I help women recover from unhealthy relationships so they can finally find and keep happy, healthy love. And I do that through a proven six-week process called the Freedom Class, and you might be interested to know that the next Freedom Class actually opens next Friday. And right now we have an early bird special running on till Monday. If you want some information on that. All the details can be found at TammyMCoaching.com. That's TammyMCoaching.com. And with that, let's dive into the content today. So the difference between safe and unsafe people. You know, when I think back in my life, many years ago now, but in my life, when I think back to some of the people that I used to go to for wise counsel, for some of the people that I used to go to to confide in uh, when I was grappling with, you know, the big issues, the little issues, the everyday stuff, the great big huge life stuff, you know, early, early recovery days and pre-recovery days, um, when I think about the people that I used to go to looking for guidance, looking for compassion, support, looking for a safe uh, confident, right? Like someone who I could confide in safely. When I think back about some of the people that I used to go to, and some of them, don't get me wrong, very well-intended people who didn't have a clue for a whole bunch of reasons, so they were in no position to be a safe person for me for a whole bunch of reasons. They were in no position. So we're gonna talk about what that looks like today because whatever's going on with you, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're dealing with, it's really important that you choose very wisely who you go to for advice, who you open your heart to, who you are taking guidance and wise counsel from. Very, very important that you select carefully. Sometimes we go to people because they've been in our lives our whole lives and we're bonded for a whole bunch of reasons, whether that's friends, family, what have you, but they can't give us what they don't have. So we have to, especially if we're new to a he healing and recovery journey, especially if we're going through really painful times in our lives, in our relationships, whatever, we have to become really, really discerning about who we're going to go to so that A, we're in a safe place and B, we're getting the best possible counsel and guidance from people who are further down the path, who have actually walked the path, who actually have a clue about what they're talking about. Imagine, imagine, right? I don't know why it took me so many years to wake up to that concept, but it did. It did, you know, and I work with coaching clients every day in group, one-on-one, -on -one, and they report back to me some of the things that their close friends, their family, their partner, whatever, will say to them. And I, you know, I think to myself, man, when it comes to our internal world, even if they love us and they're well-intended, they don't necessarily have what it takes to really give us the best advice. So unsafe others. Here's what it looks like. I'm going to go through some bullet points as I usually do and I'm going to uh, give you my little two cents as we go along. But before we do that, I'm just going to say hi to some friends. I see Julie, Julie, how are you my friend? Thanks for hopping on. And Lee, my Italian Irish sister back east. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, if I missed anyone, my apologies. But do me a favor guys, if you're catching the broadcast live, drop a one in the comments. If you're catching the replay, drop a two and if you're new to my live broadcast let me know you're new let me know where you're coming in from all right so unsafe others for starters are typically incapable of listening they're typically not great listeners incapable of listening because they themselves are often still wounded unrecovered not yet healed 
or have even begun the healing process are of low empathy, low empathy, really, you know, untreated codependents, not necessarily even destructive narcissists, untreated codependents who are really progressed in their disease can be very low empathy people. Got to be careful. We got to be aware of that, of low empathy nature. And thus, they themselves are low functioning. They themselves are low functioning. So they don't make great listeners fundamentally because they haven't even done their own work. And their nose is in their navel and they're hanging on to their little toesies because they are completely wrapped up in self. And when we go to these people, even if their heart's in the right place, when we go to these people as sounding boards or, you know, what's your opinion or what do you think about this? They're going to be delivering whatever they say to us based on often a distorted perception of reality, their own unhealed, wounded, unrecovered place, and not necessarily giving us the healthiest advice or wise counsel. Next, they appear to be listening, but are actually preoccupied. We've all had this experience, right? They appear to be listening, but are actually preoccupied with their own agenda, which is entirely different than yours. This is an unsafe person to go to. We have all had this experience where we go to someone that we are close to, someone that we work with, again, a friend, a family member, whoever. And they appear to be listening, but you can tell the whole time they're actually busy thinking about, you know, looking over your shoulder, thinking about what they're going to say next, preoccupied with their own agenda, which is entirely different than yours. Their agenda, your agenda is probably, I've got this big hairy problem that I'm trying to get to the bottom of. I'm trying to solve. Can't figure it out. That's why I'm here. Their agenda might be gathering information so that they have ammunition to use against you later. Their agenda might be, this is really juicy to listen to so that I can go gossip about it later. Their agenda might be um, gathering the troops. A lot of unsafe, unhealthy people that we go to will listen and appear to bond with you. And really the agenda is just having someone else in their corner couldn't give a flying fuck about solving your problem or helping you work this situation out, right? Something to be aware of. If you are in the habit of seeking counsel or a sounding board or a confidant from someone who really likely has another agenda than really helping you, you know, get to the next level of growth and evolution and healing for yourself, their egos in the way, as an example, not a great place to go. Maybe we need to find someone else. Next, they immediately try to rush in, give you advice or attempt to fix you, the other, the problem, or the situation at hand, right? Fixers, right? They abound. Fixers abound like controllers abound. And if you bring a situation to someone and really you just need to be heard, you might just need your feelings validated, it's not about right or wrong, you just need someone to hold space for you. It takes a certain level, I learned this a long time ago, it takes a certain level of emotional growth, spiritual development, emotional wellness to our, our own healing to be able to hold space for someone and if we are going to people who haven't even begun their own healing work they're likely going to want to rush in and fix because we're probably triggering their unhealed issues one reason you know, one major reason, have you had that experience where you just need a safe place? You just need someone to have the capacity to hold space for you while you sift through whatever it is that your, you know, your growth process is at the moment. 
and they're just all about the solutions. There's, you know, they, they, they can't travel to their heart because they're stuck in here and they just want to fix it and fix it for you. And, you know, the situation at hand's got to be, you know, in a nice, neat, tidy box because we're triggering all their shit. So if they don't rush in to fix it, it's awfully uncomfortable for them. They lack the capacity to hold space for another. They haven't done their own work to be able to do that. And often what goes along with that in my own experience is the invalidating, right? Listen, the truth is if you feel it, it's true for you, period. Regardless of facts, if you feel it, it is true for you. And if you are going to people hoping to be heard and they are incapable and their tendency is to invalidate why you feel what you feel or what your feelings are, invalidate you, not a safe place. Sometimes people just need to be validated. It's not about right, wrong, blame, responsibility. It's just about having the emotional and spiritual growth and evolution and capacity, maturity, ability to hold sacred space for someone long enough that they can be heard safely and support them in that regard so that they can figure it out. So when you're seeking a safe place to go, are they rushing in and trying to fix? Are they invalidating you, your feelings, your experience? Maybe not the best place to go. Next, they judge, criticize, diminish, and or invalidate your feelings. They go hand in hand, right? Judge, criticize, diminish, and or invalidate your feelings. I basically already spoke to that point. Anyone who is going to judge, criticize, or diminish you, you know, mothers can be famous for this, right? I hear it all the time, right? Like, we're working with my clients, and not that I haven't actually had this experience myself, of course I have, but mothers can often be famous for this. And many of them are not actually, you know, they, many of them are actually well-intended. They're, they're not actually malicious, or, you know, not always. Sometimes there's envy involved. Sometimes there's a lot of stuff going on, right? Many of them are well-intended. But because of their own unresolved stuff, their tendency can be to judge, criticize, and diminish. They don't know what else to do. They don't know what else to do. They can't hold the space. They can't validate you. They can't support you. So it's all they've got. This is not the place to bring your deepest, most tender, most vulnerable stuff. Don't bring it there. Next, they have rejected or abandoned you in the past. You know you are dealing with an unsafe person if they are someone who has either rejected you and or abandoned you in the past. As untreated codependents, as newly recovering codependents, as untreated adult children of whatever trauma, as newly recovering adult children of whatever trauma, we will often return to the same place over and over and over again. Even though we have been rejected, even though we are repeatedly abandoned because that wounded inner child in us is trying to get love from the place where they are perpetually incapable of getting love. You know, there's a saying, I believe it was Al-Anon where I first heard this many years ago, don't go to the hardware store looking for milk. The lights went on the first time I heard that. I'd been going to the hardware store looking for milk my whole freaking life. And it's very common, it's what we do. So listen, if someone has rejected or abandoned you in any way, on any level in the past, they are not a safe place to go. Do not go there for wise counsel, for a safe place. You will, you will be rejected and abandoned and disappointed and hurt and let down again. Doesn't mean you have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You can still have them in your life to whatever degree you decide is, you know, healthy for you. Small doses sometimes, no contact sometimes, low contact sometimes, whatever it is, depending on the situation, right? We don't have to kick everybody to the curb. But suffice to say, we don't necessarily open ourselves up and bring them our deepest, darkest stuff or our biggest problems and challenges that we're dealing with if their propensity is to reject and abandon us. 
not a safe place. I see we've got a whole bunch of friends who have hopped on. Delroy from the UK, welcome, welcome. Nice to see you, thanks for joining. Amy, how are you? Welcome. Linda, thanks for joining. If I missed anyone, my apologies. I see we've got Sandra there. I think you're in Florida. Thanks for hopping on, love. If I missed anyone, my apologies, but do me a favor, friends. If you're catching the broadcast live, drop me a one in the comments. If you're catching the replay, drop a two. And if you're new to my live broadcast, let me know you're new and let me know where you're coming in from so I can reach out and say hello. So moving right along, unsafe people, what this looks and feels like, people we do not want to go to for wise counsel. If you're hopping on late, you can go back and watch the replay when the live broadcast is done, by the way, so you can catch all the goods. So they have betrayed your confidences in the past, or they have betrayed you by talking about you and your confidences in the past. Kind of goes hand in hand with people who have rejected and abandoned you, but you know, a little bit different, right? You've shared with them before and then world, word travels around or someone says something in a social situation and you know perfectly well, because you know in your knower, we always know. We always know. People think they're getting away with all kinds of stuff, but the truth is we start trusting ourselves, we know. Someone's been talking about our business, right? We go to someone, that we think we can trust and we share with them and they betray that trust by speaking out of school about our personal business. If they have done that to you in the past, they will do that to you again. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So if someone has already done that to you, they need only do it once. First time they do it, it's on them. Next time they do it, it's on me right? When people show you who they are, believe them the first time, as Maya Angelou would say, right? So if they've betrayed you and your confidences in the past, they are not a safe person. Don't go back there. Don't go back there. Don't go back there. Not a good place to go, all right? They attempt to manipulate or control you. They attempt to manipulate or control you. I think back to, again, you know, when I think back to some of the people years ago that I would go to for wise counsel, one in particular, her heart's in the right place. She's just never done any, any personal work. She doesn't know any better. She doesn't know what she doesn't know. And her propensity is not only to invalidate, but to also try to manipulate and control. Not a safe place to go. If I am just wanting someone to, again, to hold space, if I just need to be heard, if um, I'm trying to figure out a solution and she has an agenda that she's going to push forward, even if she's well-intended through control and manipulation, this is not a healthy dynamic. So just because we can't have ice cream and cake with someone doesn't mean we can't have tea and biscuits. So she's not someone that I can go to with the big stuff or the deep stuff or any real stuff, actually, anything of real substance. So I don't do or try to do cake and ice cream with her anymore. But she's a good person. She's a good person. So I can have tea and biscuits. But the conversation stays in a very certain lane. I stopped going deep there a very long time ago. Not a safe place. Does it make her a bad person? No. Safe place? Absolutely not. Next, they gaslight you. They gaslight you. Now this is very common for those of us who are recovering from narcissistic abuse. We have been scapegoated, we have been gaslighted. Gaslighted means um, they cause you to doubt your reality. So if you are going to someone for a safe place, for wise counsel, for any sort of guidance, for any sort of advice, and their tendency is to not just invalidate you, but gaslight you, cause you to doubt your reality. In other words, whether it happened 40 years ago or four hours ago, they say to you, that never happened. I didn't do that. I didn't say that. That never happened. You're exaggerating. Stop making a mountain out of a mohill. Why do you always have to make a big deal out of something that's not a big deal? That never happened. I never did that. 
I never said that. Again, whether that's 40 years ago or four hours ago, it doesn't matter. You know what you live. You know what you live. You know what you lived when you were five years old. You know what you lived five minutes ago. If anyone is going to attempt to cause you to doubt your reality, they are clearly not a safe place. And for many of us, that's our family of origin. They figure by saying it never happened, they erase the fact that it did. That again, whether it's four, 40 years ago or four hours ago, doesn't matter. It's not because they say it didn't happen that it didn't happen, right? Again, we know what we live. So this is not a safe person to go to. Thank you for showing me who you are. Silently say that to yourself. Thank you for showing me who you are. I now understand, so you don't have to say this to them. It won't go over well. But a little private conversation you can have inside of your own mind. Thank you for showing me who you are. I now understand the boundaries of this relationship. Tea and biscuits, not ice cream and cake. I don't bring my big messy stuff here. I don't bring my big problems to this table. Nobody who gaslights you in any way, shape or form, big or small, is a safe place to go ever, ever, ever. Now the important thing to note, my last little bullet point there, the important thing to note, sad to say but true, most people fall into this category. Most people fall into this category. Sorry to say, but the vast majority of you, if you are telling yourself the dirt honest truth and look around your life, even if you are deeply immersed in, for example, 12 step recovery, even if you have a great big family that's bonded and appears to be close and, you know, even if you have, you know, a major entourage of friends and you've been hanging around, hanging out for years and years and years and years, whatever it is, the truth is safe people are rare. They're not impossible to find, but they are not the majority. They are the minority. I have had therapists who have been safe. I've had therapists who are anything but safe. I've had sponsors who have been safe. I've had sponsors who have been anything but safe. I've had coaches who are safe. I've had coaches, one in particular, anything but safe, anything but safe. She had never really done any of her own real work. Thought she did, scratched the surface probably, had a head full of knowledge, never really did any of her own real work. Lacked boundaries, major unresolved childhood issues. At the time, I was too young and too dumb to know the difference. Turned out to be anything but safe. Many years later, she invited me back into the relationship and I very politely and kindly, with love and compassion, no judgment, declined. Not angry, I don't hate you, but no thank you, I'm not going there. And you've all had those experiences and we keep showing up often again, especially in early recovery or pre-recovery, we keep going back to those same places, hoping it's gonna be different this time, hoping it's gonna be different this time, hoping it's gonna be different this time, and it's never different. Often it gets worse. Often it gets worse. So critical, my friends, that we recognize the difference between safe and unsafe people. And although the majority are not what would fall into the category of what I would deem to be safe people, doesn't mean we can't love them, doesn't mean we can't have relationship with them, doesn't mean we can't hang out with them and have a good time, but they are not the people that we go to hoping to be validated, hoping to be reassured, hoping to receive wise counsel from. No matter how good their talk, do they walk the walk? Have they traveled the path? Do they actually have what you want or does it just look like it from the outside? Because lots of people are going through life making everything look real freaking good on the outside. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, it's a freaking train wreck, right? So do they actually really have what you want? Have they found solutions that work? 
that you want? Do they have something for real to offer you? That is the safe person that you are looking for. Guys, I hope you got some value out of this today. If you liked what you heard, don't forget to like, comment, and or share. Once again, my name is Tammy M. I am an empowerment coach for women. I help women recover from unhealthy relationships so they can finally find and keep happy, healthy love. And the next round of the Freedom Class opens next Friday, starts officially Monday the 12th. And right now we are uh, running a, I'm, I'm losing my words here, we're running an early bird special until Monday. So uh, there's a significant savings to be had if you're interested in a powerful, transformative six week process and program that is actually a program that you can use for your recovery throughout your life. Recovery is ongoing, but if you'd like to take six weeks to go through a major transformation, get yourself to the next level and then have lifetime access to a killer program that you can always come back to and take yourself to higher and higher levels. Now would be a really good time to join. As I said, we have an early bird special until Monday. It opens Friday the 9th and officially begins Monday the 12th. So if you want some information on that, you can either go to TammyMCoaching.com or drop me a comment or send me a private message um, and we'll get you all set up. So with that, I'm going to call it a wrap. And as always, know your value. Know your value and unlock your freedom. Mwah. Much love. Bye for now.